Hi, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm very happy to have Satish with us. Uh, so Satish completed his master's in computer science and also his MBA from Germany. So uh, he will be talking about uh, uh, the process of uh, applying for MS and uh, uh, about his work experience. I'm very excited to have Satish on board today. Thank you, Satish, for your time. Thanks, Karavind, for giving me this uh, great opportunity during the lockdown. So it's always a great time to connect with uh, friends. Uh, so let me uh, give a short introduction and then let's get started. So let me share my screen. Probably you need to give uh, host has disabled the participant screen sharing. So you need to give me the screen sharing rights, Aravind. Oh, okay. Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Okay, so just a small introduction. Um, so I'm Satish, um, basically from Chennai, from the southern part of India. I did my uh, Bachelor of uh, Technology in Information Technology. Saravind was my classmate. So it's really nice to connect with uh, your fellow classmate even after 20 years. It's always a great feeling. Um, so I did my Master of Science from Technical University Hamburg in Germany and uh, also the Master of Business Administration from Northern Institute of Technology Management. So it was a dual degree program. Um, so in this uh, time, eventually uh, a good thing happened. So I obtained my German citizenship and I also uh, got this overseas citizenship of India. So it was more like a, a dual citizenship, uh, except the fact that I cannot vote there. And uh, so I had some around 13 years of professional experience in Germany in the United States, in India, and in Switzerland. Um, and uh, so I also did some certifications. I mean, I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, I did a project management professional certification, a professional scrum master, and a professional scrum product owner. Uh, some hobbies, so I like to travel, and I do some blogging, and uh, cricket is my passion. All right, so... Why, why are we you know, here? So what is the agenda for today? So I let, let me walk through for 10 to 15 minutes and then we have more question and answer uh, session. So that will be more beneficial for all of us here. Um, so why master's degree you know, and what is the reason for it? So let me also walk through about the education in Germany, the overview of the universities, the benefits for students, the application process, and finally some uh, Q&A. So why, what is why, what is the reason for doing a master's degree? I mean, they have multiple reasons. So some like to have a better career opportunities. Some like to, you know, stand out uh, from, you know, the a big chunk of the bachelor students. So some like to, you know, uh, you know, try to, you know, visit abroad or some like to, you know, uh, uh, do a lot of research and, uh, you know, not go into the industry. So there are a lot of, you know, ways which gives you the path. Uh, and because we all know that with the growing number of, you know, people graduating from uh, university. So it's always better to have an additional uh, degree in hand. So some people are passionate about certain subjects. For example, my Aravind was very passionate about compilers and, you know, uh, programming. So some people would like to more research on certain subjects. And as, as I said, you need to have a gateway uh, for the necessary, necessary step towards uh, PhD. Um, I mean, others are also doing it. So why should I not do it? You know, that's what most of the time we go with the mass psychology. So we follow the, the crowd, but that's not the way what we want, why we want to do the master's degree. I mean, that's more on the fun side of it. Um, education in Germany. So I must say uh, it was a more blessing in disguise for me in my life when I chose to study in uh, Germany because most of my uh, friends opted to study in the United States during that time. Um, but let's also not forget, uh, you know, in those times, the scholarship aid was very difficult in the United States. So that was a time Germany was offering English programs and then with, uh, uh, with no tuition fees. So that really kind of like attracted uh, uh, me, especially, you know, when you're coming from a middle class family where you think, you know, sponsoring your education or master's could be really expensive. So this is something uh, well within reach, uh, uh, you know, for a guy with a good academic credentials, but with a, you know, a mediocre uh, financial background. So almost all school universities are government funded. So I would say more than a 70 to 80% of the universities in Germany are uh, government funded. 
there are some private universities which are coming, especially in the management side. Um, as I mentioned, no or very minimal tuition fees. Uh, so the concept in Europe or uh, the more socialistic economy is the education is free. I mean, there are some, uh, you know, few, uh, uh, few, I mean, few meager amount they charge that is mostly for the public transportation or more for, you know, uh, some libraries. So this is kind of like peanuts when you compare the education fees in Canada or in US or in Australia or in any other English speaking nations. Uh, it's equal importance to research and practical approach because let's not forget that Germany is leading in terms of the research, in terms of the innovations and also in the Nobel Prizes. Uh, also, let's also not forget they have a good practical approach. I'm going to talk about this, how they kind of like um, um, segregate between the research and the practical approaches. And universities are autonomous um, and equally good. I mean, that's the best part of it. So the, every professor would like to, you know, execute what you would like to uh, teach to the students are not just bound by somebody, you know, uh, um, in a, in a central organization. So these are pretty much, uh, you know, uh, the, the best part of uh, the universities, uh, in my opinion. And there are around 380 officially, uh, recognized universities. And, uh, so they are offering uh, quite a lot of, uh, programs. So what is the benefits for students? You know, I mean, when I say, you know, there has to be some tangible benefits for students because you're leaving the family, you're leaving the you know country, you're leaving your culture, you're leaving your comfort zone. There must be some benefit for the students. I mean, I can undoubtedly say that this part of my life was the best part of my life. The, this phase of master students uh, is definitely the, the greatest time of my life. So why, why, what's the reason behind it? So there has to be something which Germany offers for it. So the medium of instruction is English. As I mentioned, um, coming from India, where we all study English as the first language uh, in school. So this is a very big plus. So the medium of instruction is English. I mean, especially in the, in the science and also in the engineering studies. And also, of course, most of the research papers people are writing in, uh, in, in English. I mean, I mean, hardly I see maybe five or 10% where people are publishing the papers in, in German nowadays. As I mentioned, no or very minimal tuition fee. The scholarships are available. So besides, you know, the tuition fees, what you have to really sponsor is your accommodation. And even that, when you have good grades in your first semesters, or you always try to get some scholarships from the dad. So this will help you to, you know, take care of your uh, accommodation. So this is pretty much uh, more or less, uh, uh, you know, the, the major amount of chunk which will be going out of your pocket uh, on a monthly basis. The students can work 180 full days. So I must say I did a lot of uh, part-time programming and harnish my, um, you know, improved my programming skills during this time. So you have uh, 180 full days where the students can work. And Germany is one country where I must say the education or the academia is very well connected with the industry. So the students really get a chance to do a paid internship and they also try can do the master thesis uh, in the industry. So this is really where they already pitch in themselves of going into the industry and knowing what's happening in the industry. And that gives the pathway uh, for the employment uh, later. And, and you know, German degrees are recognized worldwide because uh, they're known for the quality, they're known for the precision, they're known for the punctuality. So no doubt, you know, uh, this is always a, a good selling point in your, in your CV. Um, what is important is, you know, after you graduate, you know, you always have one year, you know, for job visa after completing the degree. I mean, that's the best part of it. So you're not like um, after you finish your degree, you have to go out of the country immediately, which is what most of the time happens in English speaking nation. Whereas a job search visa is for one year. I mean, in my fraternity of my friends, uh, people who have finished masters, uh, hardly people have, you know, gone back to India mainly for the family reasons or something. But nine out of 10 times uh, you hit a job in the field what you have graduated uh, in your masters. So these are some of the benefits which I see uh, of having your masters in Germany. Uh, and also you have the subsidized health insurance and then the travel card. As I mentioned, you get a, a six months uh, travel card where you can travel, you know, throughout the whole city with all that public transportation, with trams and buses and so on. And exposure to different uh, cultures. Let's not forget Germany is a big part in the European Union. So you get a chance not only to rub shoulders with the Germans here, but you also from people uh, from different uh, countries like Spain and France, from England, from Switzerland and all the European Union. 
students because there are always exchange programs uh, in the in universities. So what are the university types? This is something which you really have to uh, take into consideration when you apply. Um, the We call as a technical university or the university as such. So this is the research oriented. So people who wanted to pursue towards a doctoral degree, people who wants to continue and have a PhD under the name, people who wants to do a lot of research in the subjects which they love, love it a lot. And this is normally a two years master's degree. And around like there are eight to nine, if I remember in my times, it was around eight technical universities. So this I would relate to our Indian Institute of Technology of Standards. So normally you would expect, they would expect a GATE score and GRE and TOEFL because uh, the amount of applicants going into these universities have increased a lot. So um, so this is university, the technical universities where you get, I mean, I did my uh, Master of Science in Technical University in Hamburg. So this uh, uh, was a, a complete two years program. So normally you kind of like extend it by a semester. So you normally take two to 2.5 years. Um, there's another university called University of Applied Science. I mean, this for me is a very practical oriented. I mean, normally this is just three semesters or two years, and this is mainly tailored for the professional career. So you, it has got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, tie ups with the industries. There's a nine out of 10 times that even before you finish your, uh, uh, masters, you tend to have your job on your hand. You try and trend to, you know, get all the latest technological trends with respect to programming or, I mean, I'm not talking just only with computer science. I'm talking more about for all the fields of study. Let's also not forget Germany is, uh, is known for its mechanical engineering. So a lot of mechanical engineering students coming to, you know, the university and the university of applied science. So this, if, if people you wanted to take up, you know, employment after the, uh, the studies, I would recommend the University of Applied Science. That is, people who wanted to do research, who wanted to, uh, uh, you know, um, continue and have the PhD or even postdocs, I would recommend to have uh, to go to the technical universities. And there's also another form called College of Art, Film, and Music. Um, this is more for, you know, people with culture. I mean, let's also not forget, you know, I mean, we sometimes in India, we think that only the doctors and engineers contribute to the society, but that's not the fact. You also have different professions and different art, the political sciences, the the, med uh, the medical part of it. So the paramedical, so there are quite a lot, you know, uh, besides uh, the engineering and medicine. So there's also, you know, some universities to offer the College of Art, Film and Music and so on. All right, so application process. Um, this is pretty much uh, simple as in any other universities. Um, so as you see here, you need to find the right university. So you have to understand the, uh, the program. As I mentioned, whether you want to go into the technical university or you have to go to the University of Applied Science. And from there, you know, you need to market yourself. When I say market yourself, you have to prepare, prepare your statement of purpose. You need to write your you need to get your recommendation letter from your professors. And I'm, I must say Germany kinds of like give strong importance to your undergraduate uh, um, aggregation. So try to have a good CPA of more than eight plus so that you have a good chance uh, to get into these universities. And uh, GRE TOEFL is a must. Um, I mean, I'm not saying all the universities needs it, but if you have taken it, you have an edge towards other students who have not taken it. So always try to have the GRE and some technical university even ask for a gate course, uh, a gate score because they know the value and the standard what the gate brings in. So in my opinion, if you are really aspiring to do masters, you should always have all these three scores in my opinion. Of course, some of the universities might not have it, would not like to have as a mandatory, but try to have all these three scores so you have a good chance to apply for these universities. And then you apply for the respective universities and then you know the visa process goes on and on i mean this is something once you get into the field you get on with the game so that's uh, something in any uh, country as such all right so this is a very high level uh, uh, nutshell and a, and a summary um so let's make it more interactive uh, with the question and answer session so rather than uh, a mono uh, you know uh, just me talking alone here so Feel free, guys. Yes, uh, thanks, Satisha. So we have a few questions that has already come. Uh, 
so okay, let's go one by one yeah yes uh, about the medium of instruction whether it is in uh, german or english yeah so as i mentioned uh, the engineering studies is completely uh, the master programs international programs are always in english but there are some programs where uh, some of the subjects might be in german so but germany in order to attract the international students or the international master programs are completely in english i mean my master program was completely in english that was one of the reason why i could finish it as well so i mean um so don't worry about the language part but it's not only the academic part you know once you come into the the society you need to uh, also you know get into uh, the culture so you get in, have to get integrated so it's always nice to know the uh, uh, german language i mean it's always nice people study uh, uh, b1 a1 a2 in goethe institute and other german uh, classes so one foreign language is always uh, helpful i mean uh, in your cv it's similar like when you go to north of india and if you don't speak hindi uh, it's kind of like you don't feel integrated so it's as simple as that so if you speak the the language of the land it makes you uh, feel happy you makes you feel integrated so i would strongly recommend in your free time or as a hobby try to pick one foreign language i think german is one definitely one of them and that's what i try to even say to my son i mean try to make uh, you know one foreign language besides what you are you know learning in your school or in your society so german is very important not just for the universities but to survive in a long run or probably if any if you want to take employment or you wanted to stay there here for a long time and that gives you the feel a feeling of a good integration with the society awesome so is there any ranking of uh, german universities like for us we have uh, us news rankings yeah so i know us is more the capitalistic way they give the rankings and then the ivy leaks uh, um so one good thing about the german universities is they try to have the similar standards from the north till the south so this is more the socialistic aspect they think that if you have finished your plus 2 which is called abitur or if you have finished your bachelor's you if you are good enough to go to the masters you need to have those set of standards you know to reach that level so but there are definitely uh, uh um there are definitely rankings so dad gives a good ranking d a a d so this is a website which i would uh, strongly recommend to uh, you guys to have a look at it i just typed in there so um so as i said the the technical universities around 10 so they have the the top rankings always hamburg munich um rwth aachen tu darmstadt tu braunschweig so these technical universities definitely come from 1 to 10 and then the university of applied science also you know a lot of international programs have got the ranking so they try to publish uh, every uh, once in a uh, year so that this kind of like attracts uh, the people from different parts of the world awesome so uh, uh, what are the options for uh, phd students after computer uh, doing the computer science specialization yeah so as i mentioned if you are from a, a technical university or the university uh then it's quite easy that you you can promote yourself uh with the bachelor of uh, you know sorry for the phd degree but if you are from the university of applied science it's not that you are, you cannot do a phd or something but the chances for you to get a, a phd position is very less because you're more going in the industry stream and practical oriented and normally you try to get an uh, uh industrial sponsored phd there so if you have aspirations to do research and have a phd i would recommend to apply for the technical universities or the universities and not to the university of applied sciences and as you know germany has is a country which invests a lot of uh, funding for research and development um uh, it's it's perfectly you know ideal place you know to have your phd especially i mean i'm, I'm not saying not only in computer science a lot of people doing phd's in the natural sciences like in chemistry or in physics or in uh, in biological sciences where you have a lot of uh, research institutes like max planck and there are also like industrial grade institutes like fraunhofer institute which offers industrial uh, um, phd's so germany is renowned for its uh, research and they invest a lot of money on uh, technology and innovation so this is if you have good credentials after your masters and if you are if your family can also kind of like uh, 
afford it for another three, four years with your support. I don't see why you should not uh, go with your PhD degree. Awesome. So what about the tuition fees, scholarship, living expenses? So how much uh, one should have a cash backup uh, to be uh, yes. surviving? So this is the standard question which people always uh, ask when going to uh, foreign universities. I mean, that's one of the reasons why uh, Germany was a blessing in disguise for me. Um, as I mentioned, there's no tuition fees. And that's the first thing which reduces most of the burden. And the second thing is the living expenses. So the normal living expenses would be like around 250 euros for a, an apartment and then a 50 euros uh, for, a, uh, for an insurance. And then let's say you wanted to have a mobile and then all the food and living expenses, 400. So 400 is like bare minimum. I mean, depending sometimes some people can spend it. Let's say 500 euros, 400 to 500 euros. So question is, this is something where you need to put out of your pocket in the beginning because uh, you're new to the country then you don't have a student job. But after you get into the university, as I mentioned, there are 180 days of student job where you can uh, you know, uh, do part-time programming or part-time jobs, not only with respect to programming, there are quite a lot of student jobs. I mean, in my case, when I uh, came in the first year, I had a chance to in, uh, work in the industry or to do as a part-time programming, which cater the needs of around 500 to 600 euros, so which really took away your living expenses. So if you, if you see here, that's a dream come true. You have your masters, you're not paying anything for the tuition fees, and then you're sponsoring your living expenses. So that kinds of like makes you like independent even during your studies. And this is one of the reason why the students in German universities extend their studies because they find that the student's life is more beneficial than going into a working mode. Because in a country like England or in US, where people always try to finish their studies as soon as possible, the reason behind is they have to pay for the tuition fees. They have to pay for the living expenses. So that could be a costly affair unless and otherwise your dad is quite rich to sponsor for the rest of your life. But in Germany, the student's life is, is, a, is a heaven. I mean, I'm not promoting uh, that you have to extend your studies. That's not the intention what I'm trying to say. The main idea is where you can, uh, you know, have your, uh, you know, studies, which is not a burden, which can really helps you to focus on your grades or, you know, and able to finish it. And besides that, you have your part-time experience in your CV. So that for me is a great combination of both uh, that, that for me is a great combination uh, of, uh, uh, you know, the industrial experience plus uh, the master studies. Hope it answers, Arvin. Yes, uh, definitely. Thanks, Satish. So, uh, Satish, can you quickly check if anyone is in the waiting list uh, waiting for admission? Yeah, there are two people. So, oh, okay. I'll say I'll talk, admit. Yeah. Yes. So. All right, go ahead, Arvin. Uh, yeah, so it is either your dad or it is dad scholarship, right? Yeah. The, uh, so exactly, <laughs> either it's your dad or it's that. <laughs> I mean, as I said, not many people get the dad scholarship, but still, even without that, people are able to manage uh, their life and living here in Germany. So mm -hmm. uh, this this is a, it's not an expensive affair when you see countries like US or uh, Canada or Australia. So mm -hmm. that's one of the, the blessing in disguise, which I see uh, have having your master's in Germany. Okay. So how much is a typical uh, dad uh, scholarship? This is the question from Ashish. Um, it's not normally they try to give around 600 to 700 euros per month. So this is something uh, uh, you get it for a year. Sometimes they give it for a semester and uh, sometimes they even, even give it for two years. But uh, unfortunately, for the engineering part of it, uh, the dad scholarship is very limited. This is more dad wants to promote more in terms of the, the in the culture and in the you know in the art and in music. I'm not saying that uh, it's impossible to get a dad scholarship, but even without dad scholarship, uh, there are many other ways where you can have your life being sponsored by working part time uh, in the industry. Okay. So to answer the question, it's around. Um, 600 to 700 euros uh, per month. Okay. So what is the expected out of the scholarship or do you have to do any TA, RA or 
do some research yes, that's the best part of it so you don't have to do anything at least they oh, okay. expect you to say good things about germany oh okay. nice <laughs> uh, good so how does the placement work uh, how uh, how much does the university help in getting the opportunities for placement yeah so the i mean this is a concept for most of the indian students this is the first question i asked my uh, senior in 2005 when i applied for a german university uh, what is the probability of getting a job or what is the placement uh, percentage of uh, if you graduate from a german university i mean you should really take away this notion of this campus uh, placements or something because this is a unique model for a country like india where you have to you know maintain the demand versus uh, uh, supply so you have the concept of people going to the top notch universities they pick the students and they give the job that's not how it works in a foreign university of course in the universities there's always the job portals where industry kind of like publish the uh, uh, the internship the thesis and there's also a kind of uh, you know the alumni which has a good contact with industry so i mean in, in in a modern era where people are always using linkedin as their facebook i don't see anybody uh, has problems in finding a job <laughs> awesome so uh, actually i was surprised to know that uh, uh, germany the, there is no tuition fee on on top of that they also provide a scholarship uh, is it only for technical courses like uh, masters ms or it is also for mba um so see mba kind of like got it in in german universities in the last 10 to 15 years um so if you ask me germany is a land of science and research and innovation so but they realize this you know the the catchy uh, word of management of mbas from the uks and from the us later on um i mean i mean that was good for me my technical university hamburg offered a dual degree program so it was both master of science and master of business administration so that was one of the reason why i also opted to study in hamburg um so most of the you know the the management universities or the let's say the mbas are always uh, uh, not with the without the tuition fees you have to pay the tuition fees unless and otherwise there is a tie up with the technical university so i mean in my opinion if you really wanted to do an mba uh, i would definitely uh, recommend to do it in uh, english speaking nations like in us or in uk or in canada but if you really are a hardcore or a a kind of a guy you know with with has really good uh, regards to passion for science research innovation and you wanted to be a subject matter expert i think then germany is, is a right destination so i i th- this is a very traditional question which people always ask you know what are the top management universities uh, in in uh, in germany i'm not taking away the point there are a lot of manheim school of business leipzig uh, hhl school of management also to hamburg with the uh, with the masters program with nit it offers also an mba program there are quite a lot of ma- uh, management universities coming up uh, but it's mostly you know as i mentioned it's a land of science so i would uh, uh, you know if you're really opting to to go for your masters in science in a, in a technical field then germany is the right option awesome satish so uh, satish can you also throw light about uh, what after graduation the journey is like uh, uh, staying in germany versus moving out the visa procedures and what are the yeah. travel opportunity yeah so the best part in during the student itself you have the the schengen visa so you have a chance to uh, to travel throughout the uh, europe so that's the best part of it so i had a chance to travel around uh, 15 to 20 countries without visa so the quite a lot of european union countries like in denmark sweden norway um netherlands all these you know switzerland spain so you name it so you have your you pack your holidays in all the holiday season uh and besides that you know after two years of your masters you normally know the culture the people you know how to kind of like the survival with the food with the climate so that gives you a strong chance i mean to uh to stay here i mean that's one of the reason why uh, i kind of like decided to live in europe forever because once you get to know the people the culture the language then the the quality of life you tend to uh, start liking it and as i mentioned for the students there's one year visa for the job search visa itself 
So in this time, people, you can still do your part-time programming or part-time jobs. So you can finance your studies or 365 days is a lot of time where you have to land up in a job. And the visa regulations are, are quite relaxed now because EU offers what is called as a, a blue card for three years. So that kind of like helps you to not only work in Germany, but throughout the European Union. And that also answers to the next question, uh, um, which I see in the bullet points as a path to German citizenship. I mean, all my friends who went to US for their high studies or who went to job still don't even have their green card on their hand. I'm sorry to say that Germany offered me a citizenship within six years, including my student time. So that's really one of the a few countries in the world which offers citizenship quite fast with respect to the naturalization. So this is something where you don't have to go into the clutches of should I have to leave the country or should I have to, you know, what's the life after that? So this kind of like makes it more, even more easier. Um, this is one also one reason why I had to come to India when my mom passed away, where I had to be with my dad for some time. So this even enabled me this German citizenship to come back to India, be there, take care of the family, and then, uh, you know, go come, once again, come back to Europe. And this is all possible because of the German citizenship. So this, this is one really a big advantage uh, when you have to migrate to a country where you can be naturalized quite fast and that makes your life more easier in, in a longer run. So that's, uh, it's, it's something Europe or Germany scores over United States uh, when it comes to the, the visa regulations. So it's a, it's a paradise. And, and I'm sure maybe even after 20 years, the change, things can change because people try to start migrating and, and, and so on then you might uh, have a lot of strict uh, visa regulations. But for the moment, it's it's really a great time to be here with respect to the visas. Absolutely, Satish. Uh, so I have uh, seen many of my uh, friends in the US, uh, uh, the visa procedures dictate their life. Uh, yes. It's not... Uh, they, I want uh, my wife to dictate my life. I don't want the visa to dictate my yeah. life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that's good. And uh, are there any options for uh, UI UX courses in Germany? This is. Uh, you mean the user interface? Yeah. yeah. See, as I said, uh, there are quite a lot of always these courses. People are always having. I mean, you whatever trainings or courses you have uh, in 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 India, you always tend to have it also in the European universities. I mean, you always have, if I mean there are two aspects when you have to look into it. When you go to the masters. I mean, the city where you're going could be your first factor. And the second thing is, what is the specialization or the, the subjects which they are offering uh, in, in the university? So in my case, it was like information and media technologies or communication technologies, or some people like Aravind, like you might love the compilers or the, you know, the, the programming part of it or the, mm -hmm. the debugging or the databases. So second thing is you need to look into the course which is it's offering, whether it really suits you. And the third thing, Always what you have to uh, remember is, as I mentioned before, whether you have to go to the technical university or to the University of Applied Science. Because I know many of the people don't have the uh, you know, passion for, let's say, the uh, research. And they'll end up in technical university and they think it as a nightmare because all these mathematical equations or all those you know, uh, um, the theoretical fundas, which they don't enjoy it anymore, so for them, I would strongly recommend to go to the University of Applied Science. So these are the three criteria which you need to keep it as three stars when you start applying for a German university. Okay. So after uh, getting a job, uh, so is it uh, easy to become a permanent uh, uh, resident or a citizen in Germany? How yes. Easy to... So the, within, let's say, 60 months or let's say five years, if you have been here with the taxes, you get your permanent resident. And uh, even if you are, as I mentioned, if you are a student already, you can apply for the citizenship even in six years or worst case, seven years. So this is a topic which I mentioned. So this is really the, the fast track way in the whole world, I would say, with respect to the citizenship or naturalization when compared to the other uh, English speaking nations. So another question from Ashish, he, was, uh, he has a master degree in, uh, from US and how easy is to get a job in Germany without actually studying in Germany. So how to apply for jobs? So he already has a master's and then he uh, he wants to come again to Germany. That's an interesting yeah, for job. Yeah, for uh, directly for a job. Yeah. So, so okay. yes, uh, um, uh, as I mentioned, um, Germany has 
has this called as a blue card. So you need to explore the blue card uh, options um, where uh, you know where you uh, people want the skilled laborers, especially in terms of IT and also in terms of uh, um, you know the skilled laborers with mechanical engineering. So there is a high amount of uh, opportunities uh, if you have the, the right experience or the right educational background. So a lot of people, uh, because of the visa regulations in US are uh, switching back to European Union um, with, I mean, and then the blue card, as I mentioned, uh, for the skilled workers is really helping them. So um, I'm not sure what exactly in which field are you in, but uh, you should try to explore these uh, blue card options, uh, Ashish. Awesome. So th thank you, Satish, uh, for answering all the queries. So uh, unless uh, there are any uh, more questions, we will wrap this session. And uh, uh, th thanks for taking time to uh, uh, answer all the queries and share your experience and uh, giving back to the community. And uh, me and Satish, uh, we are friends uh, since 2000 and <laughs> since the college yeah, days. 20 years. Been, yeah. <laughs> It has been a pleasure interacting with uh, Satish. He has been guiding many people and he is uh, uh, not very passionate about Germany. I was able to see uh, when you were in uh, Germany, like the uh, amount of, uh, like uh, you, you mentioned that uh, it was totally a different experience uh, after going to Germany uh, versus before uh, what opinion you had about Germany. Right? So Yes, as I mentioned, Arvind, mm -hmm. so it's not only the academic part, the masters in abroad will make you stronger in terms of uh, time management, cost management, mm -hmm. people management, the skill management, the soft skills. So, I mean, um, it gives you a broader horizon because we are always in the comfort zone. Most of them may be uh, other day scholars during the bachelors or maybe, you know, they are living in a hostel in a different cities, but living in a different country with a new language and new uh, a set of thing always makes you uh, uh, an independent person. So it gives you the, the extra edge with definitely with the other uh, students because you don't want to go the same path of finishing your bachelor's, get a, a campus interview in a, in a service industry and uh, work for them, uh, you know, with the different time zones. So this makes you kind of unique, right? And makes an edge where you work mostly in the product companies, where you have a chance to, uh, you know, develop a product or work in the product base or in the consulting area of the product base. So it, it gives you an unique chance to stand out. I mean, as I mentioned, uh, I mean, now I'm in Switzerland, it's, I'm in the Rhine River, which crosses. So it's, I'm living at the edge of the border. So Europe, European Union as such, it's quite like, it doesn't really bring so much borders there. So there are many people who also do six months within the exchange program, even having a master's in Germany, for example, they do a semester in Italy or they do a semester in, in Scandinavian countries like Sweden or in Spain. So the, it improves your horizon of uh, how you tackle your life. So if, I mean, if you have taken the, you know, the step of doing your master's in abroad, that definitely is a, is a, is a welcome move. And if you have chosen to be in, in Germany, uh, that's definitely, I would definitely vouch for it. And I mean, since it's a computer science group, let's not restrict this uh, uh, meeting just to the computer science. There are a lot of fields of engineering which Germany is pioneering. You have a lot of uh, the electronics and communication, the mechanical engineering, the robotics, the, the automobile industry. We all know it's uh, the, the Pioneers, the Mercedes, the, the BMWs, the Audis. So this is really the hub of the automobile industry. So there's a lot of chance, not just uh, for the mechanical engineer, and not just for the computer science, but for the whole engineering aspects this uh, universities and country uh, is offering to. So thanks a lot, Aravind, once again, uh, for this opportunity. Sure. Thanks everyone for joining and yes. uh, good luck. And feel and, free uh, to, uh, yeah. Yeah, one, one quick question. So you are uh, one of the few person who has worked in three continents. So uh, in US and Europe and also in India, like who have uh, worked for more than two years. So how do you see the difference in working uh, culture among these three continents? Yes, so good question. Thanks, Aravind, for bringing it up. It's always a different flavor of life. So I see it as a tri-nation color, uh, three colors in the flag of, uh, of India. Um, I certainly feel I enjoyed working in Europe. So it has got this good work-life balance of uh, the holidays or holidays, the work times are work times. 
for sure i enjoyed also working in us uh, us was also a great experience um in terms of uh, um you know the the fast paced and then uh, the people from different parts of the world comes in and work there um of course in india being an indian native so it was also very competitive i must say so you got to be always on your toes so everything has its flavor but i think the way going i would uh, be in europe for a long time so thanks arvin for bringing it up sure. and uh, for any more queries uh, get in touch with arvin at groupd.org uh, my I, i have shared my email id for either me or for satish so we will uh, uh, answer them in the next webinar so we are planning to conduct uh, uh, regular webinars with experts like satish again looking forward to have satish also in the upcoming months uh, so maybe next month or next quarter oh, we will keep the uh, uh, the discussion going and if at all any help during my free time i can definitely try to help of guidance during the university so make make an effort to uh, apply for the universities or uh, or research a bit on that okay and Thanks good luck stay healthy that's more important now yes <laughs> yeah and stay Take- always happy Take care, Take care. everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.